Oh, good morning, everybody. We're out again, start of a new week. This is week two of our field camp, and we are out on Little Elk Creek. Uh, Briggs and I came through here, went halfway up to the White Gates and the Red Gates in a, in a video we did uh, last summer. So we're here with the students today, and this is an exercise with the topographic map and Brunt and Compass where they're measuring structure. Uh, so every time they see a rock outcrop, they are going to record the dip orientation of the rock, describe the rock type to keep track of the formations, and then at the end of the day, they're going to draw a cross section through this area to see uh, the geologic structure that is here, uh, which is uh, a monocline. Shh, don't tell them. They're right behind me. And they'll be identifying that uh, with their measurements today. And so uh, some of you have probably been up here. For those of you that haven't, this is a great valley walking along the creek. And we're going to have lunch up on the Precambrian uh, granite, the Little Elk Creek granite, which is uh, some of the oldest rock in the Black Hills, 2.5 billion years old. So much, much older than the Precambrian rock that we saw uh, below the Deadwood Formation last week. So right now they're just getting themselves uh, oriented on the map where they're at, uh, getting their uh, formation identified so they know where they're starting. And then what they do is they walk through, they just map the formation with a color. So just put a color swatch on the map at their lo current location. And any dip, dip direction, uh, bedding, uh, rock description type information they collect at the sites. All right, so let's join up with them here as they're starting to work. <laughs> no, they are sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got back. Chris, right. let's do it again. So, guys, let's, if you're not in the round, do a strike and dip. Let's go do that. What do we get for that? So, find yourself a good surface. Here's a good one over here. So, Victor, what you want to do is you want to put the, the mirror on that book there, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you want to so go ahead and lean your compass. And get it right in the middle. And push that button until it's equilibrated and you got it. Alright, so we've arrived, arrived at White Gate again. And so this is uh, the contact between the uh, basal Menalusa and the very upper surface of the Madison limestone, which is standing up at about an 85 degree um, angle here. So a very, very steep uplift. If you look back across the, the canyon, we can see it over here as well. So this, this surface right here, the outer surface on the left, that is the upper part of the bed. So the thickness of the unit is down through this way. So it's gone from flat lying like this to being picked up and rotated almost 90 degrees vertical. Okay, and so we can see that over here, same thing. That is the upper, this is the upper surface. The thickness is down this way and the bed has been rotated, you know, again in this angle from here up to there. And the stream has cut through it here. And so this is referred to as the white gate. <clears throat> Structurally, it is a monocline, and it is right on the contact of the Minnelusa uh, and the Madison. So they've got to tease out the, uh, the lithologies, uh, place a contact mark on their map where the contact of the units are, and basically it's right at that uh, pine tree and kind of runs right up there. You can see this is kind of a uh, light tan and reddish color sand. And then the limestone or dolomite of the Madison is right back over here. So there's a contact, geologic contact, a formation right through there. But it's nearly vertical. In effect, that surface right there that's exposed way up high uh, represents that contact. It's just that this sand has already been eroded off to the right. Uh, and the more competent rock is standing up in relief. So they're starting to teach things out here. Uh, we're walking along Little Elk Creek. It's got water flowing in it, little cascades and waterfalls around it. It's really nice. So we'll probably be 20 minutes here. Figure out this little structure, get them oriented with their bedding orientations. This is the first time they've seen, you know, beds standing nearly straight up in the air. So we'll see if they figure it out.
Okay, so I'll give you all a, a hint. You probably should start with this up here and move down through that way. And look at lithologies, right? So we're looking for the base of the Menelusa, which was what out at Ranch A? Sand. Okay, so that's what we want to hunt to see if that basal sand, which in the literature, that basal sand is called the bell sand. It's got a formal name to it. The bell sand? Bell, B-E-L-L, -L, yep. And it was cross bedded, right? That bottom unit. And so if you see bedding in here, it doesn't necessarily imply that it's stratigraphic bedding. It could be structural bedding for you know the cross beds for the Aeolian sand. Okay, we just came through the white gate and worked our way down through the outcrop of the Madison and now we are coming up on the uh, Deadwood Formation and it stands again at a very steep uh, angle, probably some 70 plus degrees, same as the Madison, uh, and forms a, a red gate. There's the red sand on this side of the canyon, there's another outcrop on the other side of the canyon, hard to see in the trees. So, you know, right through there is the gate, and you can see the the dip is like this and this surface right here is the bedding plane so it's standing up pretty steep you know that in other words bedding plane means when this rock was deposited this surface right here was horizontal which is like this flat and so it's been rotated up to this angle up here during the uplift of the Black Hills and as I walk this way somewhere right in here I'm kind of right on that that dipping surface and so the the what we call it strike is right along the direction of my stick out here so that's the contact then between the Cambrian Deadwood formation and the overlying Winnipeg and then the Inglewood is also here and there's the Madison right down below us. so in this little valley in here that's probably not more than 100 feet wide on this slope in here is um, Winnipeg and Inglewood and Whitewood are in here somewhere if those things are present. So Inglewood, uh, I have scoured this slope up here uh, in the past up close to the contact with the Madison and I have found some pink uh, limestone which is uh, Inglewood but then whatever the uh, Whitewood exposure and Winnipeg is, it's all hidden in this slope. But you can see this is a big valley. So we have a resistant outcrop over here, a resistant outcrop over here, and the softer shales and siltstones form an erosional uh, valley in here. So again, very typical topography that we can use to infer lithology and lithologic change and those types of things. So it can be very difficult to determine. We know that there is something here. There is something between the Deadwood and the Madison. And so the students will end up just using a dashed line to infer uh, these various formations in here. And that's typically uh, how we do these things. Okay, so the Deadwood right here is, again, nearly vertical, probably 70 degrees. And then right across the canyon and just downstream, the Deadwood is that cliff up there and it's very flat again. So what you have up here is a, a flat top and then the beds steeply dip like this and then they flatten out again at the bottom. It's like a big S turn is what these rocks are doing. So I'm kind of tracing out with my stick, you know, what the surface looks like and that S turn in structure, uh, nomenclature, if we talk about geologic structure, we refer to that type of a pattern as a monocline. So this is a monocline structure in here. Uh, it's, a, it's a way that the elevation changes and accommodated the stress uh, during the uplift of the hills below us uh, deep seated below us are uh, fractures and faults and so none of those surface uh, or those deep seated faults express themselves on the surface in the black hills it's all these monoclinal folds that form the uh, boundaries of the black hills but below them 
uh, they are uh, faulted in the same types of faults that you see on the front range of the big horns and the front range of the Rockies. They just blow us here. Okay, so students are coming. They're down here looking at the lower uh, surface of the Madison right there. So I'm trying to stay out ahead of them today because I sprained my ankle last week uh, and not even in the field. I sprained it on campus uh, Thursday evening after we got back from the field. I tripped up uh, concrete steps, rammed my foot into the steps and actually threw myself about six or eight feet forward. I was going that fast and hit my foot and it was enough of a jar that it sprained my ankle. And so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was real tender, real ginger. Today I've got an ace bandage on it and I'm wearing my eight inch high lace up boots. And it's doing pretty well. So there's the creek down there. Pretty good water flow in it right now. Little series of cascades. There's a little pool or pond right down there. I'm striking out ahead of them just because I'm going slower so they're stopping at all of the outcrops that they pass and doing a quick rock description location on the map and measure bedding attitudes so they can put their their map together at the end of the day so this is an old road grade and maybe not up on this trail I can't remember but either here or you see there's a trail down there and then the creek is down below but this used to be uh, prior to the 1972 flood this was a, a drive you could drive up here from uh, Piedmont up to Dalton Lake which is probably another two miles ahead of us and then everything was washed out in the 1972 flood and it was never uh, re-established and it was just made this this walking trail and there's at different points in the creek down here there's you know, there's parts of old pickups and there's some bridge planking somewhere from up above and things that had washed in. And they just made this into a walking trail. It's really nice. Okay, so we are in the Deadwood Formation here. There's some Deadwood, typical Deadwood outcrop in there. So uh, in the last week, our first week of field camp, we, we did some rock descriptions of the Deadwood. This is now just a different location. Uh, but this is a really beautiful valley in here and on the other side of the canyon this this red cliff up above that's the deadwood formation up there and we will end up up the canyon further up as we go up uh, we are we're walking down dips so we're going through all the rock and we're going to end up on the uh, precambrian rock which at this location is a is a granite a really beautiful uh, granite <clears throat> so I'm just moving out keeping keeping going walking slow trying to baby my ankle so I can keep busy uh, in the field over the next few days we're going to be mapping for the next three days Tuesday through Thursday of this week <clears throat> and a lot of ups and downs and and hill country and side hilling and I got to make sure I can I can do that, so I'm trying to take it easy today. There's some more typical deadwood outcrop up ahead of us. There's 
part of the Divas hiking group. There's probably 20 or 25 ladies up here right now, the Divas hiking group. And they passed us way down at the very beginning and now some of them are starting to come back. Okay, so if you call, recall, in the Deadwood, I think we talked about glauconite, a phosphatic mineral. And that's what this green is in here. So, you know, this is kind of shale inner partings. This is all falling down just from right up above us here. You get past this tree. <clears throat> yeah, so right there. And again, this is a, a series of thinly bedded sandstones with shale partings and, and a lot of bioturbation in here. And so on these on these rocks, it's very common to see the bioturbation and you can see uh, trails of, of uh, the critters where they crawled around and you know, like there's some there's some trails right here on on that piece but all this stuff is kind of modeled and just broken up in here a lot of that is from the the critters mucking around at the in the bottom of the sea so like these surfaces right here you know this all these pieces so these are old old burrows trails in the sand those types of things there's pieces of stuff in here. So full of full of critter parts and critter trails and that type. Hello. Hi. Hey. What are you trying to teach them today? We are looking at just structure today, the structure. attitude of the beddings and and this, you know, we walk through that white gate and red yeah. gate and the rocks yeah. are standing mm -hmm. near vertical, then they yeah. flatten back out so they're right. just we're just measuring the attitudes of the rocks and then they're going to put together a profile view okay of what it looks like in here just to get them used to measuring and looking for structure okay cool yeah it's a geography course yeah well that's today is yeah yes. yeah. yeah yeah geology yeah. major oh good, good. <laughs> long long okay. time ago long okay, long so, time ago um, teach them about this too yeah. It's oh out. yes yeah <laughs> poison ivy yeah they'll learn one way or the other yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, hard way or the easy so i am uh filming this for my youtube channel oh you oh, are sure. <laughs> so is that okay yeah that's fine so right. this is the hiking divas is that where the hiking, yes, day the divas hike, hiking club day hike divas, yep. day hike divas. Yep. okay well you're going to be on <laughs> all right cool yeah. rock and dr rocks that's my channel Oh, okay. So, all right. Yeah. I already told some of the ladies I met down there, and I, I gave them the spelling so they should be able to look it up because YouTube is pretty finicky on how it searches for things. Yeah. So, so. I in rockin'. No, it's R O C K apostrophe N. Oh, apostrophe. like rockin'. rockin'. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. So what else is going on here? A lot of this stuff is uh, this is these are like uh, mud. They're yeah. they're shale, but they're right. rip up clasts. Okay. So like a storm. Mm -hmm. This is, this is uh, shallow marine. Right. And then you get a storm and it rips up the underlying shales and oh. pulls them into a bed and it's like a conglomerate. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's why I kept looking at this thing. That's yep. kind yep. of weird. So all these, all these rip up, rip up yeah. class. Yep. And it, because most of this stuff was just mud and sands, yeah. you know, the, the muds could hold together and you get these little kind of shale class yeah. in there. Yep. Cool. So very common in, in this lower part of the Deadwood to get these rip-ups. Yeah. 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 Geology is way cool. So we can, it is. We way can count cool. this as yeah. continuing education. Yes. Yeah. 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 We get credits. Much. Well, here they come. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, have a good rest of your hike. Thank you. I'm going to have to start a group when I retire called the Hiking Studs or something like that. All right, so if you recall, in the town of Deadwood, when we looked at the basal contact of the Precambrian and the Deadwood formation, it was about a 30, 35, maybe 40 foot high cliff of sandstone above the, un above the uh, dipping Precambrian rock below. And so lo and behold, right here, we've been walking down dip, so we're getting toward the base of the, the Deadwood, and we've got a beautiful, cliff primarily of sandstones there's some uh, interbedded shale layers right down here 
So we are getting really close to the contact with the Precambrian. So and you can see right now that this is really flat as well. So down below when we came into the Deadwood, it was standing up like this at 70 degrees or so. And now it's rolled back over and it's relatively flat. And then right around the corner up here, we should see the contact with the underlying Little Elk Creek granite. So I'm just going to continue on, let these guys finish up here. I'm going to go ahead. Osmosis into the schools. Oh, is that right? Good creek down there. Typically, there's water running across the face of this cliff in several locations because just normal snow melt and spring rains saturates all the ground up above us. You can see, you know, here's huge evidence of water flowing down over this, this cliff. I mean, the rock is stained. And so, like I say, it's usually very, very common that water is actually flowing across there and a lot of times through the summer. And here we're only in, what is it, May 22nd or 3rd today and there's no water so that attests to the dryness that we have and this ground right up here is typically soaked and and has it's kind of marshy and has uh ponds in it and it's dry it's the first time i've ever been up here regardless of time of year and seen this dry but this is another area where it's usually seepy and it is yep so that's wet right there so it's seeping a little bit but not much so you can see water dripping and the ground is a little wet right here but that's it it's usually standing water here so we're dry that's a gorgeous outcrop though back there along that, that cliff. Now I guess the trees are in the way. Yeah, that's wet right there too. Alright, there's something completely different. So notice over here we have this red sandstone of the Deadwood Formation that we've been walking through. And then right below me here, you got these nice gray kind of rounded, rounded surfaces with the Deadwood right on top of it. And so right in there is basically the contact between the Precambrian right here and the Cambrian. So this rock right here, the Precambrian Little Elk Creek granite is two and a half billion years old. And the rock above it is 500 million years old. So there's two billion years of missing time here at this location. So again, this is the great unconformity but the age difference is quite a bit different than it was up in the, the town of Deadwood. And this is a completely different type of, of rock. This is not uh, weakly consolidated schists, which it was in Deadwood, but it's competent, hard, plutonic rock, a granite, cooled as a melt, probably, oh, I don't know, 10 to 15 kilometers below the surface. And then it's been uplifted to uh, the surface exposure here that we see now. It's really nice stuff. This would be, it's very small outcrops of this, but so you see typical type of weathering for the granites around here is these black and gray and white and 
uh, green and here's a dark uh, lighter green and sometimes there's orange and all these different types of lichens on the surface of this and really hard I mean, almost all the energy I'm hitting with is springing, springing back. So that's called rebound energy. Oh, let's take a look at this chip, if I can get it. So there's the weathered surface. And there's what it looks like. This is not the best example that I've seen, but very, very tight grain. Uh, black muscovites in here, a lot of quartz. In some locations, it's got almost kind of a bluish tinge to it. <laughs> I think I'll keep this sample, and we haven't done any uh, microscope work for a while, looking at uh, minerals and things in the microscope. I think we might do that for this sample. Water is really down. Sometimes all these rocks are covered over. Nice waterfalls and that at that time. It's just gorgeous up here. But really low right now. Yeah, that's all. This is all dead wood up here. So kind of right on this surface in here. You know, there's kind of some boulders over there. Those might be some quartzite, quartz boulders and things that were sitting at the contact. <coughs> I'm not sure. This is a great area. Typically, that's a relatively large sized pond down there. This is a popular place for people to come uh, in the summer cool off up here, have lunch. That's what we're going to do is have lunch. So I suggest you do the same. Go have lunch. Mm -hmm.